Your Steve Jones Show podcast will start shortly. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Brewers Outlet, your beverage supermarket on Reagan Street in Sunbury. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Jones Show, Friday, April 26th, 2019, News Radio 1070 WKOK. I'm Sean, and Steve will be there in just a moment in the Sunbury Motors studio. Sunbury Motors, Ford Lincoln Hyundai, North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia on the strip routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Fridays here on the Steve Jones Show, always brought to you by Brewers Outlet, the beverage supermarket on Reagan Street in Sunbury. Terrific specials going on through Tuesday. Schaefer and Schaefer Light 30 pack cans, 1349, and Stella Artois, 12 pack bottles, 1688. Grab a dolly as you head in to Brewers Outlet. Grab the cases you need. And of course, if you need some help, uh, take it right out to the car for you. Not only your favorite brews, but also soft drinks, water. Lots of great sauces. What you have going on in the grill here as we get into the uh, cooking season. Chips, snacks, pickle bar, of course, and uh, ice right by the counter. All at Brewers Outlet, the beverage supermarket, the supermarket, the beverage supermarket on Reagan Street in Sunbury. You can get in touch with us with email, stevejones at wkok.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Twitter handle at Steve Jones PSU. And you can also subscribe to our podcast. You can go on the Apple Podcast app or Google Play, search Steve Jones Show, hit subscribe. And after the shows are live here on WKOK, we drop them right to your smartphone and tablet. You can listen to them anytime, anywhere. Also at stevejonesshow.com, you have access to three months of shows. So dip back into the archive and catch another interview. You may have missed, or maybe you didn't get a chance to see or uh, listen to the uh, terrific chat that Steve had with uh, the play-by-play voice of the Seattle Mariners, Dave Sims, earlier this week. We've got that on the podcast page at stevejonesshow.com. So we're with you live till 5, then we'll have our late-day news roundup and Phillies baseball tonight. Uh, Phillies with another tough extra inning loss last night, kicking off a four-game set with the Miami Marlins. Starlin Castro. We'll continue his hot hitting tonight, looking to do that. It was 3-1 last night, Miami in 10. And it was Castro's two-run homer with two outs in the 10th off Hector Neris, the deciding factor in that game. Jose Urena will be on the mound tonight for the Marlins. He is 1-3, ERA. And be going up against Jared Eikhoff. So 6.30 will be on deck. And first pitch at 7.05. Here on 1070 AM and on WKOK.com while the uh, the Phillies are on, we'll have CBS Sports Radio and up to the second information on the NFL draft. Rounds two and three will happen tonight and uh, that'll also start uh, in the seven o'clock hour. So maybe, well, maybe we're live with the show today here on WKOK between now and five. We may hear something about Josh Rosen being dealt from Arizona to the Cardinals. So it could happen in quick fashion. I read something not too long ago, about an hour or so ago, that Josh Rosen now no longer follows the Arizona Cardinals on Twitter. So that could be a red flag. Get it? Cardinals? Red red flag? Sir. Well, look who's here. How are you? That's good. I like that. (laughs) It it was funny, though, when you first said that. I'm like, Arizona Cardinals, isn't that the same team? Oh, wait, we're we're talking baseball now. We're good. (laughs) That's right. Not the the D-backs. I I got a little confused for a second. Actually, Arizona right now is on the clock uh, with the 33rd overall pick and first pick of the second round. 
here's the, you know here was the thing last night. If you were on the clock last night, you're, you're the you're the you're the Cardinals. You're on the clock. You have been on the clock now for what five months? Close. Why do you still need to take all the time? Do you really think that somebody's going to call you at the last second and go, "Hey, by the way, we've got a really sweet deal for you. We're going to give you our first round pick for the next four years." Yeah, it took them theirs. seventy minutes to go through only five picks last night. I didn't like that. Move it along a little faster. Yeah, I, I just I, I didn't understand why it took so why it, why it took so long. I mean, you've had all this time. To, if it's second or third round, yeah, I can understand taking all your time there because you've got to reevaluate everything. But man, if you're the first, second, third, or even fourth fourth pick of the uh, first round, you should be ready to go like that. Yeah, we'll see if uh, the uh, Arizona Cardinals and Miami Dolphins will. Uh, will uh, do the dance, and uh, they'll be sending the 48th overall pick. The Dolphins would give that then to the Cardinals in exchange for uh, Josh Rosen. So we'll have to wait and see that happens. I think the, the sooner that Rosen gets out of there, the better. I just don't see both quarterbacks coexisting. No, no, I, I don't think so either. But by the way, who who said that the Steelers were moving up into the top ten la- yesterday? It was a bold move. Somebody was talking about that through the afternoon yesterday, and I remember two gentlemen having fun with it on the radio. Who are you talking about? <laughs> who could that possibly? Who can? I, who can? I, who can it be now? Huh? Listen, the Steelers made a. That was a brilliant move. It's a bold move. I, I, I agree, and I think it's a brilliant move too. It was. It's yes. a need they desperately had. They had very little help at linebacker. Everybody they've tried in that inside has not been the type of player that they wanted or needed. You need a, a linebacker right now that has. And I know this is this is fun to say now because everybody making the the comparisons, but you need a Troy Polamalu style player at linebacker, one that can go laterally left and right with all these quarterbacks that have movement and have and have all this capability of uh, running these read options. You need a guy in the middle that can actually read and react, and the Steelers didn't have that. Plus, they also didn't have anybody that could cover a tight end very well in the middle. When I first started going to Steelers games 25 years ago, I would always love to cheer for the defense, and I'd always call them Big Nasty D. And I, that you're now, we, there's now a turning point in the NFL. It's now all about quarterback play and just throwing up lots and lots and tons and tons of points. And in order to counterbalance that, you're going from big nasty D to speed and disruptive defense to keep up with yeah. the offense. Yeah. I mean, this is how it is now. Yeah, and, and that was a huge need, and they would not have been able to fill that need at 20. They gave up a first round pick next year. They gave up the the first, you know, they traded first round picks this year, and then they gave away a pick that they had already had, or a round that they had already had two picks in. So to me, this this move really didn't hurt the Steelers one bit, and it was actually what they wanted to get for that pick for the tenth pick anyway. The key out of all this is Antonio Brown for this reason: if the Steelers did not. Get rid of Antonio Brown. They would not have had that extra third-round pick, and and I'm 99.9% sure that move up to 10 would not have happened last night. Oh, I agree with you, and I didn't think when— Oh, what are you doing on the show? Go sell something. I'm I'm on (laughs) the show. Go sell something. I'm on the show to celebrate my being correct. Okay, so once out of every eight years, we have to go through this. So mark it down. <laughs> we'll be here in twenty twenty seven. We will be. That's one thing. That's, that's one thing about this show that that people know that listen to this show. When I am wrong about something, I do say I'm wrong. You do. Right. And I know right now we're wrong for having you on. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I had. I, I felt the opportunity to. Uh, to you know, barge in, be yes. a little, be a little bit, uh, you know, uh, you know, blow my own horn, as it were, you know, and and, and be bragging a little bit because I felt really good about that last night, right around pick ten. Uh, I also thought maybe I'd take the opportunity to congratulate Mac Gatrillo on being the new voice of Shikolimi Football. <laughs> I didn't get that memo. Exactly. <laughs> 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 well, they got the guy that if you're look, I um, as you know of the of the two Devons, I they're to me they're like you can put your fingers that close as to how close they are. 
and probably because I saw more of him in person. I was more of a Devin Bush guy than a Devin White guy, but either one is an absolute winner. So the Steelers got exactly what they needed, and it was worth the picks. Well, that was the other thing I was going to ask you. and uh, It's was, worth the picks. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you last night. You've seen everybody in person that that the Steelers were looking at, and did they get uh, did the trade-off work well enough for them? Yeah, sure it did. Now he's going to have to make a payoff. He hasn't played it down yet. But you know what? For some reason, he, I thought they would have gave up more. For, for them to move up that high to, to the top ten because they've never last time they picked ten was back in two thousand for Plaxico Burris. Who who'd they who they trade with last night? Denver. Uh, I was the Broncos. Denver. Yeah, yeah. Eh. They moved up ten spots. Yeah, I, I just didn't think Denver. You know, they were talking about how Denver wanted so much for that pick, and um, to me, that wasn't that wasn't you know outrageous at all. Well, that's about how it worked for everybody. The Giants gave up the 37th pick and two other picks later, um, you know, to pick at the end of the round and get the kid from uh, Georgia. The, the Giants did they with the with the the uh, player for the quarterback from Duke? Was that Eli Manning <laughs> picking the player to replace him? What? Because he went to he what? went to the Mannings camps, he been, they've been really tight with this with this kid all through the all through the no, uh, years. No, no, I just no, wondered no, if it was no, the Giants no, letting no, him pick his no. successor. No, that does, that's not how this works. Okay, this is not fantasy football, and you and Suit Light sitting in a room together, and you like pick guys. That's not how it works. This is Dave Gettleman of the Giants through his scouts saying, "Look, this is the guy." That uh, we want to pick Eli Manning has nothing to do with it, other than the fact that they think he's at the end. I mean, it has nothing to do with it. Zero. It's, it's, a player doesn't pick somebody. This is not. This is not standing on the playground and we go one, two, three odds even shoot. Okay, I get the first pick. That's not how this works. And Eli Manning is thinking, hey. no, this isn't the end for me. I would think in his mind, he's got at least two more years in him. Well, I agree with it, but but I just thought that this is somebody he already has a connection with. He can bring him along. There's some tutelage there that he can give. This is the Giants going in, working him out, and saying, you know what, we like how he works out. Because that's one thing I'll say about Daniel Jones um, is interesting, and he's he's interesting to evaluate, and here's the reason why. He has no pro prospects on his teams at Duke. None. He was in second in pro football focus among quarterbacks and passes dropped this season. Uh, so I think he's a harder guy to evaluate because he doesn't have a lot of, quote, high-end talent around him. So if you're looking, for example, Sam Darnold last year versus a Daniel Jones this year. Now, look, if I'm looking at them, to me, Darnold's the better player. So I, let's, let's put that aside. But when Darnold, when I did a Rose Bowl, Darnold had two NFL picks blocking in front of him. He had Ronald Jones, an NFL pick at tailback. He had Juju Smith-Schuster as one of his wide receivers. He had Burnett as another wide receiver. I mean, he was operating with some pretty doggone good high-end college talent that became professional talent as opposed to Daniel Jones. Now, do I pick Jones at six? No, I'd have picked Josh Allen if I was the Giants. If I was the Giants, I would have picked Josh Allen. Yeah, I was shocked right? he fell down to Jacksonville. And, and, and I'd have waited until 17 to see if Daniel Jones was still there. I mean, among the quarterbacks, after Murray, Jones was the second guy I thought of. Better than Haskins. But not, you know, but if you're saying, okay, you got him, but not at six. Now, I think they could have gotten him at 17. And who's going to be in between them and him? Because the Redskins were all hot and bothered about Haskins. Everybody knew that. And if they misread that, then... So I just looked at it and went, what are you doing? But, but I, I, I just don't... I, I didn't get the spot at six. I mean, I thought the, the Eagles made a great move going up a couple spots to get Dillard. I mean, there's, there's Peter's replacement at left tackle. That was a great move by the Eagles. Uh, the Steelers made a great move to get Devin Bush. He's going to make it pay off, but he made a great move. The Buffalo Bills made a great move by not moving. 
And they got Ed Oliver, they exactly the guy they wanted and didn't have to move to do it. So sometimes, sometimes a great move is made by not moving. And then there's the Raiders draft. Really? Like all three picks? We're all like, really? Really? Hmm. I, I said to Sean I wanted Mayock to go on on NFL Network and kind of explain why he did what he did the way he would have to do it if he was on the on the show. This he year. was on Total Access way after midnight. It was I had to I had to call it a night after that, but I didn't get a chance to see it. But yeah, the the, the guy who was taken number four, it was very grainy, low def video that, that they were showing on NFL Network. Looks like the party was in his garage. Put some <laughs> disco lights up and. And there's like a white backdrop. <laughs> well, I mean, I think they could have gotten him with three first round picks. They could have picked him up later in the first round. Yeah, Daniel Jeremiah, he had him like in his between 20 and 30. Yeah, yeah. the kid who went number four. Yeah. I mean, I think they could have picked him up then. It goes back to what we were saying earlier this week. I think we said it yesterday, first hour of the show. It's just all about, uh, you know, just too many teams, you, they, they overthink it. And they're just concerned that that guy's not going to be available with my next pick down the line. I better take him now before I never get that opportunity again. Then they get a running back. I mean, you're going to tell me that, like, Miles Sanders is not as good as Jacobs is? I could pick up Miles Sanders tonight. I'd be, I'd be I'm just as well off as picking that guy. Then their last pick is a box safety. Really? A box safety? Hmm. Now, I had said yesterday that I thought that the NFL this year's draft had probably 20 legitimate first-round picks in it. Well, when Darnell Savage was picked at 21, it proved my point. So, uh, it's... I look, you know, because I'll sit there and I'll look at a tape. And let's let's just take Ohio State. See, you turned his mic down. See, that's the power you have. No, 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 no. I did that willingly. I, I did cough. that willingly. You had to cough. <laughs> He had a cough. No, he didn't. Is there is there a doctor in the room? No. All right. Um. So, so when I look at a tape, I'll give you. Let's take Ohio State as an example. Okay. So I look over Nick Bosa. I say, okay, there's a problem. Um. Then I'll look at okay, eighty six Draymond Jones. Well, you know, he's a problem. And the other couple guys, Hamilton. I don't sit there and look at Hamilton as a quote problem. I looked at Chase Young, who had replaced Bosa. I said, hmm, problem. None of the linebackers maybe say that. Then I look at, like, uh, Kendall Sheffield at corner. I was like, hmm, problem. All right. So, I mean, that's how I start looking at when I'm watching a tape of a team. I'll say, problem, no problem, you know, problem, no problem. I've watched Darnell Savage on tape the last three years. How many times in those three years do you think I sat back and turned off the tape and said, no, nah, four is a problem? How about none? Not one time did I look at it and go, boy, darn, boy, you got to keep away from Savage. He is one. Zero. I'm watching the Kentucky tape. Edwards, safety, mm, problem. Johnson, corner, Lonnie Johnson, I'm like, problem. Josh Allen, big problem. All right. Darnell Savage. If you used to listen to me, the people, I go, oh, he's, you know, in the Big Ten. Who's a big problem guy? He's not the guy. Green Bay picked him. It's the, he's their problem. But I don't see what they're seeing. Somebody said to me, well, the metrics. I, said, I don't care about the metrics. I got a tape here that tells me not a problem. Like over and over and over again looking at tape and saying he's not a problem. Then there's Haskins. The Redskins got their guy. They were desperate. They wanted their guy. <laughs> So one thing about Haskins, you know what the Haskins' biggest advantage is? Limited tape. He played in Beaver Stadium. I watched him. Did he make some good plays? Absolutely. But that's the deal. He made some good plays. He didn't play well against Penn State at all. And guess what? When he's pressured, he is not athletic enough and does not have a very good grasp of the three-foot circle you've got to work in to make plays. Just doesn't. He is he is not creative at quarterback. Not creative. That, you know, we were just talking about Eli Manning. What's Eli's biggest problem right now? He's not creative. Remember the play in the Super Bowl where David Tyree made that incredible catch? Okay. What did Manning do on that play? Now, this is Eli Manning from eight years ago. What did he do on that play? 
He should have been sacked. Don't Everybody remembers the catch part. Remember the front part. The front part was Eli Manning was creative enough to get out of trouble when he was legitimately dead to right sacked and he got out of it and then made the pass downfield. Now that's Eli Manning eight years ago. So even a guy that's limited in mobility can still do that. Well, Manning in his prime could. He can't do it now. He can't do it now. But that's Haskins now. He can't get out of trouble and make a throw. Now, do I think he has a strong arm? Do I think he's for the... But you know what? You watch when he has to move, his accuracy gets flushed. Your guy, Devin Bush, will allow you to celebrate a little longer. Please, go ahead. You may celebrate. He wants me to play Carlos Santana's winning his bump music today. And I'm thinking, um, no. Not for you. All right. Remember, was it the, the Cardinals this year were, what, 3-13? and 13? If not that, very close. Yeah, I think they were three and thirteen. Is he, yeah. is he still is he still sitting there? He is right here by my right shoulder. Yeah. The Cardinals were three and thirteen, which, by the way, means they won three times this year, and still ended up with the first overall pick. Do you see where I'm going with this? He's not no. And frankly, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but he he was dead right. They they did move up. I was dead wrong. I said, I said when I say sarcastic, they'll never move up. In a million years, they'll never move up. The Steelers never move up. Well, I was dead wrong. You were absolutely right. But they did pick the guy that if I had a choice to pick... Like, I'm sitting there saying, okay, put everybody up on the board. Who do you pick? If I'm the Steelers, I'd pick anybody on the board. Devin Bush would have been my first pick based on need, what he can do, and so forth. Now, and Devin White would have been like, mm. and, and it, I think for me, there's there, it's a bit prejudicial on Devin Bush because between Bush and White, I've seen Bush play in person how many times, seen a lot of tape on him as opposed to only watching White on TV a few times. So thus, that's my prejudice toward Bush over White. I think you'd, you'd win with either guy. He ended up with a great pick. It's a great pick by the Steelers. I had a great pick by the Eagles. But the Eagles did a great job picking. And, and as for Daniel Jones, you know, to have my son pick that high... This is my last show. We'll come back with more in a moment here on News Radio 1070 WKOK. <laughs> Brewers Outlet, the beverage super stock superstore is ready for all of your warm weather activities. Camping, picnics, grilling, visit Brewers Outlet first for microbrews, imports, domestic specialties. They got them. Grab some pickles at the pickle bar, Steve Jones' favorite place. Snacks, Brewers Outlet has that covered. Soda, sports drinks, check. Weekly specials, too. And there's lots of convenient parking. So get all the refreshments. Everyone will love for your next outdoor gathering at Brewers Outlet, the beverage super stock superstore, Reagan Street, Sunbury. Hi, this is Steve Jones inviting you to be part of the 28th Annual Truman H. Purdy Memorial Golf Tournament to benefit the Greater Susquehanna Valley YMCA. We'll kick off the event with a special broadcast on WKOK Tuesday, May 7th, starting at 3 at Penn's Tavern, south of Sunbury. Wednesday, May 8th at the Susquehanna Valley Country Club. Golf the four-person scramble and win great prizes. Openings are still available for the morning flight. To sign up your team today and for more information, call the Sunbury Y at 570-286-5636. Get outside and clean up the yard. Yes, dear. Springtime means cleanup time, even at Sunbury Motors Ford. Sunbury Motors Spring Inventory Cleanup has begun. Once a year, SMC takes their entire new Ford inventory and prices them at levels not seen before. SMC is where you want to be to choose from 44 2019 Ford Escapes. This just in, Ford Motor Company and Sunbury Motors have increased the discounts on 2019 Ford Escapes. They're slashed to the lowest price 
ever offered to the general public. Now in an amazing 1895. SMC is where you want to be for 2019 Ford F-150s starting at just $25,899. And SMC has 66 in stock. SMC is where you want to be if you want a brand new 2018 Ford Focus for $14,905. Hurry in to Sunbury Motors Ford in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza. Taking your calls at 800-795-9565. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. All right, great to have you with us on the show today. Brought to you by Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street in Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. Imports, domestics, microbrews, best selection of beer anywhere. Wine coolers, water, soft drinks, snacks. They roast their peanuts fresh and hot every day. And the Brewers Outlet specials between now through Tuesday. Schaefer and Schaefer Light 30-pack cans, 1349. And Stella Artois, 12-pack bottles, 1688. And the pickle bar led by the barrels and the dills indeed second to none. In the transfer portal, it extends to basketball. Rushier Bolton has put his name into the transfer portal. All right. The NBA playoffs resume. We'll talk more about the draft next half hour. Rounds two and three tonight. Could be three Penn State names tonight. So... The Sixers in the East, everybody, the top four seeds all advanced. So the four seed, the Celtics, get the one seed, Milwaukee. The two seed, Toronto, will get, will, will get the three seed, Philadelphia. That series, by the way, starts tomorrow night. And uh, let's go Daily News and uh, Inquire. Marcus, welcome to the show. It's great to have you with us. Thanks for having me on, fellas. All right, let's uh, start with uh, round one. Uh, they take they take the Nets out. You know that they're the better team. You know they have more talent. But what did they show you in round one that shows that this is not just a round one win, uh, and and that they played really well? Well, the underlying narrative for the Sixers this season, as with every season since the quote unquote process began. It revolves around the health of the team. And down the stretch, after the Sixers acquired Tobias Harris to pair him with Jimmy Butler, who they got in November, and, of course, Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid had knee tendinitis, probably resulted from knee injury and surgery two years ago that cost him 14 of the last 24 games, which meant the Sixers entered the playoffs having only played their starting five together for 10 games. (laughs) But to answer your question, what it shows you is how good this team can be when Joel Embiid is in, involved and incorporated in a, a, for a sustained period of time. He played four of the five games against the Nets. They lost the first one and won the next four. He didn't play game three, which they happened to win. But when he's on the court with this team, they can contend. They can contend with the, the Milwaukee Bucks. They can contend with both Houston and Golden State. And they can contend with a very deep, very experienced Raptors team, which has, you know, a team that has probably the best all-around player in basketball on it in Kawhi Leonard. All right. You brought up Kawhi Leonard, so let's go with that because matchups mean everything. Ben Simmons has done a nice job of making everybody around him better. But Kawhi Leonard, in his own right, is an excellent defender, but he's also a very physical defender. What does that physicality mean for Simmons in a series like this? Well, I don't know what it's going to mean in this series because Ben has only played two seasons. So it'll be interesting to see how he responds to Kawhi's physicality in this series. And of course, Kawhi didn't play Ben at all last year, Ben's right. rookie year. Right. And then he dominated him in the three games that they played. I mean, he, I think Ben Simmons scored 17 points and committed 10 turnovers, three of them offensive fouls when Kawhi Leonard was on him for it was like a hundred possessions or something <laughs> something this year. It was just right. utter domination of an all star, of an all star point guard. So 
Yeah, that's one of the biggest questions. How will Ben Simmons manage being frustrated and bullied and outfoxed by, to, you know, to my estimation, by far the best all-around player and probably the best defender, off-ball defender, on-ball defender, versatile defender in the league in Kawhi Leonard. I mean, we're seeing from Kawhi Leonard what we saw from Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan when they were, you know, nine-time all-first-team defensive players who also scored a lot. I mean, he's just uh, he's, he's probably the best all-around player in the league right now. All right, now what about the matchup with Embiid? What can Embiid do to exploit the Raptors not only inside, but his ability to also step outside. What can that mean? Well, my contention when Mark Gasol was traded to the Raptors from uh, Memphis, a trade that, and I guess you know, in Toronto they say the trade was initiated by by the rap by the uh, Memphis Grizzlies. I'm sorry, and in Memphis they say that the uh, trade was initiated <laughs> by Toronto. Right. Probably because nobody wants to upset uh, Kyle Lowry, right. who was involved in early trade talks. But when they made that trade, it was clear to me that the, the the Raptors saw Joel Embiid taking another step forward and said, let's go out and get the best Joel Embiid defender we can find. And that's probably Marc Gasol. Right. So how Marc Gasol deals with Joel Embiid, who has developed further, but also who is not in great shape because of his injury down the, down the stretch. And also is, you know, he just went through a net series where he was able to bully Jared Allen, a guy who gives up 50 pounds. He's not able to bully Marcus All. He's not able to play mind games with Marcus All. Right. And if he if he goes if he if he commits flagrant fouls or fouls that are hard enough to be considered intimidation fouls, you know the R- Toronto Raptors aren't going to worry about it. So it's right. a big it's a big difference how Joel Embiid deals with the, the the physicality and the experience and the talent of Marcus All. You know that's that to me is the subplot. That to me is the secondary story here. What about the benches in this one? What can the Sixers bench mean to their success? Because obviously a lot of these bench players had to play during the course of the season and start because the starters were only together for a handful of games. Yeah, that's that's really been one of the disappointments down the stretch since the trade deadline. James Ennis played well. He, you know, he's a swingman who can play defense, but Kawhi destroys him as well. He destroys um, everybody. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to say, so um, I'm, what but, I'm going to do, know, Marcus, is I'm going to play that, that sentence back. There we go. There we go. There exactly. We go. Kawhi over destroys and over him. again. Yeah. On a loop. But James Ennis, has been, he played well against the, uh, against the uh, Nets, but he's not an answer. Mike Scott has plantar fasciitis in his foot. He's going to miss the first game tomorrow. Tomorrow evening, he's probably their number one bench player, like the most versatile guy. They have a huge issue in, in that T.J. McCollum, he, you know, he's just undressed defensively. Uh, you know, in the playoffs when you can right. target him right. and you can't have him and J.J. Redick, another inferior defensive player, on the on the court at the same time. So you have to have J.J. Uh, or uh, Tobias Harris and Jimmy Butler pick up the slack at point guard. So you have to change how your how your team works. So, yeah, it's, it's a really, I don't know, it's a really difficult call for the Sixers. It, it, their bench just hasn't played. Boban Marjanovic did not have a good series against the Nets. If you make him be mobile, you've got him at your mercy. You know, he's a he's a foul machine. The, the Raptors bench is clearly superior and if it's not the difference in the in the in the in the series, it'll be a huge factor. I I think honestly, it'll be the difference. I can't see this these benches matching up anywhere near evenly. Right. What kind of job has Brett Brown done keeping this group together? It's just been spectacular. I mean, two years ago, he increased the win total by something like 28 games. This year, he he matched what he did, except he never had a team. Uh, he never had a cohesive team for more than six or eight games at a time. It's just been unbelievable the job that he's done after four years of you know the, the management losing on purpose, changing the personnel, injury woes. I mean, every single first round, every single first round pick, you know, uh, and every single lottery pick they had in the first round missed significant time within their first two seasons. So he's just been unreal. So in Philadelphia, it's it's funny. I don't know what the what the sickness is. 
but there's a fire Brett Brown contingent because well he doesn't co- he didn't he didn't beat the Celtics last year he was out coached by you know Brad Stevens which is no that, that's no slight Brad Stevens is a wonderful coach he doesn't win close late games well you know give him a team for 25 games in a row and maybe those that team will be more efficient in the last five minutes and you know essentially. Joel Embiid is really kind of in his you know, second going on third season. His point guard played power forward until last year. Right. It's just been wonderful to watch what he's done and painful to watch the criticism of him, which <laughs> isn't warranted because there's just not enough evidence. Look, I think that he's now showing that when he actually has legit NBA top-level personnel, he has chops. I yeah, think it's he, I think it's the opposite. I think he's showing he's he's showing me he has the chops. When he's given a chance, I mean nobody nobody expected the Sixers to reach the playoffs last season, much yeah. less you know be the favorite and dominate in a first round win over Miami. And I can't tell you the 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 level of discontent after they lost Game One to the uh, to the Nets. You know, in a game where Joel Embiid could only play twenty minutes, it, it's just. It's just ridiculous the the what what has beset him over the last two seasons, and you know there are just there are a lot of people in Philadelphia who didn't believe in quote unquote the, the process, and the process I thought was a fraud. It was a Sam Hinkie, let's lose and and, and clear calorie sap space indefinitely plan. That's not a plan. That's just a <laughs> that's just a deconstruction. Any you and I could do that with, without purpose. And you know the, the players that they had at that time that Brett had to coach. They were not supporting them with veterans who could help those players improve. They were just right. losing and losing and losing. Anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. It doesn't take genius. It, it takes an owner who doesn't care, and that's what they have in Josh Harris, who also owns the New Jersey Devil. Right. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it, it is what it is. He, he's done a wonderful job. He's doing a wonderful job. And I'll tell you this. If Brett Brown were to get fired in the next three or four weeks, say they say they lose in six to Toronto, he would be hired before yes. the before he left the facility. Yes. I mean, it's just that simple. He's a he's a spectacular coach and deserves a lot more credit than he gets. I, as I always say to critics in any situation such as this one, be careful what you wish for. That's right. Absolutely. I mean, there's a, there, everybody in Philadelphia, I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people in Philadelphia are like, well, you know, if they would just hire Jay Wright from Villanova, it would all be better. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. You can, you keep, yeah, I like Jay, and he's a wonderful college coach, but uh, the NBA is a different, uh, different animal. Yeah, in fact, Billy Donovan holding on one. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> Fred Hoiberg. Fred Hoiberg. You mean Nebraska head coach Fred Hoiberg. (laughs) That's right. Marcus, thanks so much. Appreciate the time. Thank you for having me anytime. Marcus Hayes, Inquire Daily News, Philadelphia. More on the draft. Could be see uh, three Penn Staters maybe tonight. Miles Sanders, Amani Oyewarie, and Connor McGovern. This might be... Their night. We'll see. We'll come back with more in a moment on News Radio 1070 WKOK, brought to you by Brewers Outlet. All right, so Kyler Murray, first overall, Josh Rosen saying, hey, really? (laughs) If Rosen is not dealt tonight, If I'm the Cardinals brass, which obviously I'm not, then I wait. I wait until the season gets going. See if you can get yourself in a position where it's Sam Bradford to the Vikings all over again. Why not? Why not? Then you're looking at a team saying, hey, your first-round pick next year in 2020 – Hey, you guys need a quarterback. We've got one. What do you say? Yeah, they so pick they first do- right out of the gate tonight in the second round. So yeah, we'll find out if they, you know, they may move down. Maybe someone else may. You know, like Miami could uh. Could well, Miami them, very so. Miami might, but again, you've got to be able to make a deal. In other words, the Cardinals are not going to give up their first pick tonight. The deal is to trade Josh Rosen and you get their pick. 
You get a two this year, maybe a three next year. Or maybe the Steelers will deal Devin Bush, and thus the victory party will then have to be halted. You just want to see how fast he'll leave his office and fly back into the studio. Well, those are words I never thought I'd hear in the same sentence. Uh, (laughs) Suit and fly. (laughs) The last time we saw it move that quickly was the announcement on the loudspeaker that Dunkin' Donuts had just brought over two dozen (laughs) to the break room. Where's the coffee? Coffee. Box of Joe. Two boxes of Joe, right? Uh (laughs) <laughs> he sent me a text. I had to jump in today. I texted back, why? <laughs> <laughs> it all falls on me. I'm the one that turned his mic on. So, Well, it is the end of the month, and obviously an appearance on this show means it must have been an absolutely Huge banner month. They were good till August now, right? If you say so. His favorite month of the year. Well, based on last year's sales (laughs) in digital media, it was not Roger's favorite. (laughs) (laughs) Numbers never lie. That was a good one, Roger. Yeah, it was. (laughs) Uh, Fortunately accurate. All right, so... Today's show brought to you by Brewers Outlet. Your station for news, weather, business, and CBS Sports Radio. News Radio 1070 WKOK Sunbury and on WKOK.com.